So it's been over five minutes since I've last made a video about Fable, which is absolutely, unequivocally unacceptable, and as such I shall punish myself with 17 lashings. But before I do that, I thought it would be a cool idea to pit the two favourite Fable games against one another to finally decide which is the best Fable game, because that is obviously something we all stay awake at night thinking about. Legend says that Greek scholars and Chinese monks are still trying to figure out that very question to this day, so I thought I'd just make a video and do it for them. I will compare Fable 1 and 2 based on these eight subjects. The story, combat, world, characters, music, graphics, tone and overall gameplay. I will give each segment a score from 1 to 10 and at the end the game with the most points is your winner. Now don't bother commenting which is your favourite as it doesn't matter. This video is based solely on facts and logic so in the words of Matilda's dad, I'm smart you're dumb, I'm big you're little, I'm right you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. Anyway, with that lovely intro done and dusted, it's time for Fable 1 to vs Fable 2. Who wins? You decide. Well, technically I decide. Because it is my video. But I'd love to hear your comments and ratings for each subject down below, so yeah. Let's begin. Fable's story starts off as pleasant as pleasant can be. It's your sister's birthday and you're tasked to go around the town of Oakville and earn yourself three gold coins so you can buy a box of chocolates and give it to her. Once you do, she tells you how she's been dreaming about you, which sets the tone for a Jamie and Cersei Lannister kind of relationship later down the line. But before that sick, twisted thing blossoms, bandits attack your town in a rather traumatic fashion, killing almost everyone. You walk to your home and find your father's dead corpse on the ground, which I imagine is not a lovely experience. A bandit then attempts to attack you, but he is quickly shot down by a lightning blast coming from a mage called maze who saves you and teleports you away from Oakvale recruiting you into the Heroes Guild. The rest of the game is actually pretty decent, you go around doing quests and getting stronger, you beat the bandit leader Twinblade and reunite with your sister who was kidnapped and had her eyes cut out on the attack, you enter the arena, meet Jack of Blades which still to this day is the best fable character ever created followed closely by only Reva, don't you dare tell me otherwise, you then find your mother, Jack of Blades takes her away, you go to jail, you escape jail, maze betrays you, Jack nearly kills the guild master, he then slits your mother's throat in front of you, you fight Jack in the Hall of Heroes, you win and then you have to make the choice to keep the Sword of A by killing your sister or throwing it away forever. This choice doesn't actually matter in the end though as it is revealed in the later games that Teresa, your sister, is still alive meaning that in Fable 1 you did throw the sword away. That or Teresa took a stabby resistance potion beforehand. Then if you have the Lost Chapters DLC the story continues where Jack comes back as a dragon. You beat Dragon Jack and this time get to choose to throw his mask away or keep it. Whilst a little short the story is pretty great in my opinion especially for a game that released like 16 years ago. 8 out of 10. Fable 2 story starts off with the same premises Fable 1's where you have to earn 5 gold pieces, however this time instead of buying chocolates you buy a music box with your older sister which is rumoured to grant you a wish. Who tells you this you ask? Well none other than Teresa from the first game, yeah we don't know how she's still alive, it's been 500 years. Anyway we get the coins, grab the music box and make a wish, a wish to live in the castle. The wish at first seems to not have worked but in the middle of the night a guard comes to us in our sleep and escorts us to the castle as the owner Lucian Fairfax wants to talk to us. We walk through the magnificent castle walls and enter Lucian's study. He then tells us to stand on a platform that has the guild markings on it and so we do, thinking that he wants to adopt us. The platform goes red and suddenly Lucian gets mad, picks up his gun and shoots our sister Rose. But don't worry, as he then apologises, which makes us instantly forgive him for shooting our only sibling the damn stomach. He then decides that murdering one orphan just wasn't enough for today and proceeds to shoot us so hard we get blasted through the window. We fall to our death but oh... What's this? A dog licks our fingers? Teresa appears out of nowhere saying that today is not the day we die. We somehow live on and go about the rest of the game on search for the hero of strength, will and skill. We find them and come together to form the Power Rangers. I mean take down Lucian Fairfax, whose goal is to build the tattered spire which once constructed will grant the user a wish. Lucian's wish was to bring back his wife and daughter and essentially become a god to remake the world and bring an end to chaos. Well isn't he just thoughtful. In the end Lucian talks to us for a bit and if you're not quick enough to shoot him then Reva does it for you. He blatantly steals our kill and we are somehow okay with it. Also our dog dies in the process by jumping in front of a bullet aimed at us which still to this day is the saddest anime death ever. Though it's not all bad as in the end we do get to make the choice between three wishes. The first is to bring back all the innocents that lost their lives in the making of the Tata Spire. The second is to bring back our sister Rose and our trusted canine compadre and the third is money. For those of you who picked money, you're a terrible person and you should be ashamed. Anyway, the story is pretty nice, but nothing too special either. It also doesn't help that, again, it's pretty short and can be completed in under 10 hours, which for an RPG is not very lengthy. 7.5 out of 10.
Is it fair to compare the world from a game released in 2004 to the world of a game released in 2008? No, but am I gonna? Yep. Fable's world is honestly still pretty damn good to this day. Albion is a great and charming continent to explore in the Fable universe. There are a ton of different regions that offer locations to visit from villages to forests to snowy biomes filled with polar bears and... Oh wait a second, I'm thinking of Minecraft. Silly me. In all seriousness though, the world of Albion is one of the best worlds in any game. However, I personally don't like the idea of regions, especially since in Fable 1, most of them are small and quite cramped. I prefer one big open world, you know, like Skyrim or GTA. Also not to mention that the Fable games are plagued with invisible walls, which is a super pet peeve of mine. Again, it's not fair, I understand, but I'd have to give the world a 7 out of 10. Fable 2's world is basically like Fable 1's, but the regions are bigger, there are more variety in the locations, and you can jump over fences and swim in the water. 8 out of 10. This one is actually pretty tough. The Fable series doesn't have a ton of characters, but the ones it does have are really freaking good and are staples of the franchise. In Fable 1, we're introduced to Teresa, the Guildmaster, and Jack of Blades. These three are definitely the most well-known in the franchise. Even now, when I replay Fable 1, Teresa still remains mysterious and interesting. Jack of Blades is still charming but ruthless, and the Guildmaster is still so... Freaking annoying. Check the guild for more quests. Shut up, Guildmaster! There are also other characters like Lady Grey, Maze, Thunder, Whisper, and more that are pretty decent too. Surprisingly, I'm going to give Fable 1's characters an 8 out of 10. There aren't much, but the ones that are there are fantastic and very memorable. Ah, Fable 2. Bless your cotton socks, you did try. And you definitely had some great characters. For example, the returning Teresa, Hammer is there, I guess. Garth is surprisingly cool. Lucian, and of course, the ever charismatic Reaver. However, Fable 1 had Whisper, 7 out of 10. But if I can be real with you guys for a second, I think Fable 3 actually has the best overall cast. Walter, Jasper, Teresa, Logan, Reva, and a few more were really fun characters. If it wasn't for Jack being absent, I think most people would say Fable 3's cast is the best. The characters were also voiced by pretty famous British actors and comedians, so that does get some extra marks in my book. You know what? Screw it. Fable 3 gets a 9 out of 10 for its cast. Now usually I would mix combat in with gameplay, however for this video I feel like it requires its own segment. You see both Fable 1 and 2 have good combat, but they both suffer where the other one succeeds. Let me explain. Fable 1's combat is really grand, there are a crap ton of spells and mechanics to use that would be severely lacking in the sequels, however the controls for the combat were a bit clunky. Swords handled fine, ranged was a bit of a nightmare, and you'd constantly hit people by accident and break things with your spells. However the sheer variety of spells and augmentations on your weapons were fantastic, as was the ability to buy and wield armor, which for some reason Lion had decided was a terrible idea and removed it in the sequels in favor of silly clothing. The combat was good but lacked fluidity. 8.5 out of 10. Fable 2's combat was far better in my opinion when it comes to melee and ranged, however the magic was insanely lacking with spells compared to the first game. I know this was done in an effort to make magic less OP, but guess what? It was still OP. The best part about Fable 2's combat was the fluidity of which you can switch from sword to gun to magic which kept the pace and flow of the fight going. You also had options to improve your proficiency with your weapons allowing you to block, flourish and counter with a sword, and with a gun you were able to zoom in and auto-target specific parts of the enemy's body. 8 out of 10. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about the overall gameplay as it would take a very, very long time as is with every RPG. Let's just put it this way. There are a lot of things to do in Fable 1, from fishing to side missions to pulling a sword from the stone to turning into a Balverine and of course getting through the demon doors. Also, in case anybody forgot, Fable 1 lets you sneak. It actually had a stealth aspect to it, which is really cool to think about. Not only that, but there were way more enemy variations in Fable 1. Remember the pixies? Yeah badass. There's also quite a big difference in boss battles. Bosses in Fable 1 are just better. The Wasp Queen, Thunder, Twinblade, the Kraken, and Dragon Jack to just name a few. You also had the ability to boast about the quests you were going to take, which is a feature I really adored and miss. If I had to rate it all the way back in 2004, I'd definitely give it a 9, and in some cases, it's a 10, but comparing the overall gameplay to Fable 2's is an 8. Fable 2's gameplay is basically like Fable 1's, but again, bigger and mostly better. In Fable 1, you could buy a house and get married. Well, you can also do that in Fable 2, but also have kids. Not to mention you can now actually jump over fences, the demon doors are still around and as fun as ever with some new unique rewards hidden behind them like a house, the side missions are more entertaining, the gargoyle statues were a thing, they added swimming and you can now buy and live in a massive ass castle. Let's go for an 8.5 out of 10 just to keep things spicy.
All right, so it turns out I've been blabbering on for quite a while, so the last three subjects are gonna be the speed fire round. Sorry, but this is taking too long and I have things to do. I mean, come on, you can't expect me to hang around all day, can you? <laughs> Insert that scene from the first Harry Potter movie where Harry and Ron are on the train and Harry opens up the chocolate frog and gets a Dumbledore card and when he looks at Dumbledore disappears and Harry's all like, hey, he's gone, and Ron's all like, well, you can't expect to hang around all day, can you? <laughs> remember that scene, guys? Huh, huh, you remember it? Huh, oh, good times. Um, anyway, music for both games is a 9. The soundtracks are amazing and the themes for both games are still awesome now. I mean, every time I hear the intro to Fable 2 still makes me feel epic. The graphics for Fable 1 is an 8 as it looked good for its time and Fable 2's is a 9 as it looked even better for its time. And lastly, the tone of Fable 1 is going to be a 9 as it would constantly go from funny, silly, farting moments to dark, twisted, sacrificing people moments. Fable 2 also did this but more effectively with things like the expression wheel and the sheer amount of side missions, so 9.5 for Fable 2. Alright, now whilst I tally up the scores, please don't forget to like and subscribe as videos like these do require a lot of effort to create and I am an attention seeking whore who loves to be praised for doing even the minute of tasks. Oh, would you look at that? The scores are in and the winner, ladies and gentlemen, is... Fable 2 with a score of 66 out of 80. Unfortunately, Fable 1 just fell short with 65.5 out of 80. Now that is close. But again, I must reiterate, Fable is my favourite gaming franchise and I adore all three Fable games. This was all for a bit of fun and it doesn't really matter. I mean, I personally do prefer Fable 2, but even so, I have a crap ton of love for the first game and the third one too. So please don't get as butthurt as the people in my Witcher 3 vs Red Dead Redemption 2 video because that comment section was not very pleasant. Well, that'll do it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section what two games should battle out for our admiration next. And do not forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.